On behalf of the session committee, members and friends of the Gannon Free Presbyterian Church, may I say to you that you're very welcome to our recorded services this Lord's Day morning. Wherever you're joining from, it's good to have you with us. May the meeting be a blessing to your soul and a benefit to your spiritual life. Having then passed on those few words of welcome, let's begin our meeting by bowing together in a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we approach thee in the worthy and peerless and precious name of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. We bless thee, O God, for the opportunity given unto us of being able to come before thee at this time. We thank thee for the return of thy day. We bless thee, O God, that thou hast set this day apart and sanctified it. And we ask that thou wilt Remember us then, as we meet together by this means, for the ministry of the word of God and the praising of thy name. Lord, bless the message in song. Remember the message that will be preached. We ask that in all things the Saviour will be exalted. And we pray that our time together around the things of God then will be a benefit to our hearts and souls. Remember all those who have joined with us. We pray that I will bless them each one. And remember all of our congregation. We leave every individual before thee. We ask, O oh God, that thou wilt minister to them and further the work of God in our congregation and throughout our denomination. May the blessing of Christ rest upon the ministers of the gospel this day in their delivery of the word of God. So remember us now. And continue with us as we wait on before thee in the name of the Lord Jesus, our Saviour and our God. Amen. Amen. Our soloist today is Mr. David Warwick from Balamina. He'll be singing again tonight, but just now he's going to minister in song to us. And the piece that he has chosen is He Will Hold Me Fast. Thank you. 
justice has been satisfied. He will hold me fast. Raised with him to endless life. He will hold me fast till our faith is turned to sight. When he comes at I really appreciate David's help in the meetings today, trusting the Lord will continue to bless his ministry and song in times to come. So thank you, David, indeed. We now come to the reading of the Word of God. So if you have a Bible to hand, would you turn please to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and we'll begin to read from the opening verse. These words will form the text that I wish to bring before you, preach from in this service today. Hebrews chapter 12, reading the first three verses only. Hebrews 12, reading from verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. Amen. May the Lord bless his word and its reading to your heart for Christ the Lord's sake. History will be made on Friday the 24th of July this year. I suppose it's rather an unusual sort of a history because that history will be created by something not taking place. I'm referring to the Summer Olympic Games which were due to commence at the end of July, uh, the venue was to be in Tokyo, Japan, and those games then were to continue right into the month of August. But because of the COVID-19 pandemic, those Olympics have been now postponed for a year. This is the first time in the 120 years of their existence that postponement has had to take place. There have been times when the Summer Olympics, modern Summer Olympics, have been completely cancelled, uh, for example, during the two world wars, but never before have they been postponed or put off for a period of time. Of course, the ancient Olympic Games go back some 3,000 years. Olympia in Greece was their original setting, hence their name, and while wrestling, long jump, discus, javelin throwing, as well as chariot racing were all popular, it seems that the foot races, the running races, held the most attraction. Given their popularity at the time, it's not surprising then that when the Lord came to write the Holy Scriptures of Truth, he would employ some illustrations from those ancient Olympic games. And so, by way of example, he says to us in Hebrews chapter 12 and the verse 1, let us run with patience the race that is set before us, 
running the race, the race from earth to heaven. That's what I'd like you to think about today for a few moments as we consider the word of God. Using this illustration taken from the Olympic Games, let's think about the race of faith. And there are two matters that spring forth from these verses that I'd like to highlight to you. Firstly, could I mention to you that Christ is the author of our faith? The apostle would have us here view the Lord Jesus at the start of this race that's mentioned, this spiritual race that's highlighted in these verses. Can I ask you, are you running the race? Because Paul, the apostle here, says, let us run the race. He includes himself in that running. He includes also all those to whom he's writing. And from what I've already said, you'll have gathered that what I'm really asking you is, are you on your way to heaven? Someone might say in reply, I hope I'm going to heaven. Another might maintain, I'm intending going to heaven. A third might say, I expect to be in heaven. But to produce those quotes really doesn't answer my question because I'm not really asking whether you hope or intend or expect. I'm asking a more direct question than that. I'm asking, are you sure you're going to heaven? Because despite what some may tell you, you can be sure of heaven. One of the great themes of the little epistle of 1 John is that which we know. Time after time, the word know appears. And in 1 John chapter 5 and the verse 13, the apostle says, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. And therefore we must conclude from what the Apostle John there said, that there is such a thing as eternal life. Some would deny that fact. Secondly, it's possible for you to know that you have eternal life and that you're on your way to heaven. You'll note also from that verse that this knowledge finds its basis in the written word of God. And so the confidence that we have that we know that we are going to heaven is not a mere feeling or an intuition or a forlorn hope that have no real basis or foundation. No, the knowledge of going to heaven is a certain day because it comes from the inerrant and the infallible word of God. It's also possible for you, if you haven't already done so, to lay hold upon this eternal life and to begin this race to heaven. That's what the Apostle Paul spoke of doing in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and the verse 12, where he said, lay hold on eternal life. And the word is grasp it or seize eternal life. But you might say, well, how can this eternal life be obtained? Well, you do so through becoming a child of God. By getting to the cross, that's the starting point. Every race on earth, every natural race must have a starting point. And it's the same in regard to the race to heaven. In natural races nowadays, the starter has a gun. And the race begins whenever the sound of the gun is heard. But in ancient times, the starter dropped his glove or perhaps his handkerchief to signal the beginning of the race. So there was no noise. Therefore, the competitors had to look at the starter and watch for the signal to begin. Verse 2 employing that thought, speaks of you and I looking onto Jesus. And that's how you begin the race to heaven. You look by faith to Christ, because Christ is the author of our faith, or as the margin there maintains in verse 2, the beginner of our faith. The Christian race, you see, 
for a man or a woman starts when they first come to Christ. That same verse 2 in Hebrews 12 also highlights the cross. And that's it. You begin for heaven by looking at Christ and in particular his death upon the cross. Because of course Christ's death was a sacrifice, a payment for sin. The Greek word that's translated looking there in verse 2 is a much fuller word than we can have in the English language. It is the meaning in the original language which indicates to look away from everything else and everyone else. In other words, when we are told to look unto Jesus, the word here means to look to Christ alone. You see, some people when it comes to the matter of salvation are put off getting saved because looking at other things. Firstly, some people in regard to thinking about salvation, they begin to look at the crowd, their friends, their acquaintances, and they think, what would my friends say if I came to Christ? Hebrews chapter 12 and the verse 1 refers to the great cloud of witnesses. And in the Olympic Games of long ago, tens of thousands would gather for those ancient games to cheer on the competitors. Perhaps some of the runners would be put off by the crowd. The thought of competing before such a number would give them stage fright. But Paul, in regard to the spiritual, he said, if you want to begin the race to heaven and run the race to heaven, if you want to become a child of God and start on the road to heaven, get your eye upon Christ. Don't allow the crowd to put you off coming to the Savior. Others in the natural games might not compete because of an impediment or what we might call a care, a muscle strain perhaps, a flu, some other health problem. And again, in relation to the spiritual, some sinners are put off salvation by the thought of their sin. Their sin becomes an impediment to them coming to Christ or a care when they think about being saved. Some horrible crime perhaps that they've committed, a wicked activity they've been involved in, an illicit love that they feel they can't give up. However, the Bible there says in verse 1 of Hebrews 12, Lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And what the word of God then would highlight to you who is yet or not yet a child of God, don't let the number or the magnitude or the depth of your sin keep you from Christ. The Bible says in another place that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin. From all sin. Perhaps some runners in the Olympic Games were hindered by a confidence. Looking at themselves and thinking how much better they were than everyone else in the race. Overconfidence has destroyed many a competitor. And so it is in relation to the spiritual also. My friend, look by faith to Jesus for salvation. Look away from yourself. And don't imagine that you are good enough or can do enough or pay enough or perform enough to get to heaven. The Christian race is for those who realize in the words of the hymn that none but Jesus can do helpless sinners good. And that's what you are in relation to your ability to get to heaven under your own means or by your own righteousness. You are helpless. You cannot do it. And so there are many things to hinder individuals from coming to the Savior. But that's the one thing that you must do. The only thing that you can do in relation to beginning the race to glory. It is to look by faith to Christ alone.
and then to receive him as your saviour. So that's the first thing I would highlight to you from these verses, that Christ is the author of our faith. Second thing follows on and is simply clear from what's said in verse 2 also. Christ is also the finisher of our faith. Because just as he is at the commencement of the Christian race, so he is also at the end of the course the rewarder of those who finish the Christian race. And those who run best are those who keep their eye upon Christ all the way along. Because the Christian race for the child of God can be over difficult terrain at times. And in such times, we need the support of the finisher firstly. Because spiritually, we don't always run on tarmac or asphalt sometimes it's shale or sand difficult things to run in the course isn't always flat at times it's undulating indicating the ups and downs of life on occasions a spiritual race race goes through paths that are narrow and dangerous in other places of course the the roads that we run are broad and the running is easy your life and mine's made up of different days, different circumstances, different events. Some are pleasant, others less so. But what's the key to the child of God running successfully in this Christian race? The key is keeping your eye upon Christ. Because looking on to Jesus isn't only applicable at the start of the race. It's also necessary in the running. If I remember him, who in the language of verse 3, endured such contradiction of sinners, then in the words of that verse 3, I'll not be wearied or faint in my mind or disheartened whenever opposition arises against me. That word contradiction in the original Language is gainsaying, which is from an old English word which literally means to say against. Have you had someone say something false against you or your faith in recent days? Well, so had Christ. And therefore he knows. And he understands. And he is able to sustain you when you're under attack. You keep your eye upon him. And you don't worry so much about what's said or who said it. Oh, you keep your eye upon Christ. Perhaps sometimes in the natural race there would be those who would seek to hinder other runners. Perhaps a sly pull back upon the vest or perhaps use their arms or their elbows to seek to make more room for themselves and knock the other person out of their stride. And sometimes the words of others can, in the Christian race, knock us out of our stride, as it were, and cause us great disquiet and great trouble of soul and mind and heart. Oh, in such times, trust in the Lord to sustain you. Keep your eye upon him. Again, sometimes you and I are tempted to give up the race because of its difficulty. Well, if that's how you are, look afresh to him. Who, as it said in verse 2, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. And I might be speaking to someone and Life for you as a child of God is so hard and difficult at this time that, oh, sometimes you imagine throwing in the towel. But my friend, the secret in the race is to keep your eye upon Christ, fixed on him. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. His joy was the knowledge that by his death your soul would be redeemed. And then can I ask you in the light of what he has endured for you, 
Is it too much for you to endure a little for him? That word endure, as it appears in verse 2, means really to abide under. And you know, there's a sense in which the Lord Jesus didn't have to abide under the cross. He wasn't compelled to go to Calvary. He could have avoided the cross. He could have come down from the cross. But had he done any of those, your soul would have been lost. There would be no Christian race. But Christ abided under the cross. He endured the cross. But because it was essential to your eternal well-being that he endured. I remember in holidays many years ago going in one of the theme parks into a so-called haunted house. It was pitch dark inside. We had to walk from room to room. And of course you can imagine what happened. Members of staff dressed in black would jump out or wail in the darkness. And though we all knew what was going on, yet it was a frightening experience. And yet in every room there was what was called an escape door. So that anyone who became overly frightened could get out. But you know that the horrible, frightening things in life very rarely have escape doors. There is no way out. You've got to go through the experience. Well in those times, keep your eye upon the Saviour. And he'll see you through. He will sustain you. Because he is the finisher of your faith. And one of the thoughts behind the word finisher, though it's not the main thought, is that of completer. Because Christ has finished the course. He has gone before. He knows every step that you have to take. And thank God he is with you every step of the way. Keep your eye upon him. And when times are hard and difficult, when the course is difficult, look to him all the more and trust him for his grace and lean upon him. The picture comes to mind of a runner in the Olympic soul a number of years ago, who in one of the, the races took cramp or pulled a muscle and he was lying on the track unable to complete when his father rushed down from the crowd. He was able to get through the security. He ran onto the track. He, he picked his son up and by his son putting his arm around him, the father was able to carry the young man over the line. And they completed the race. And that's just how it is for you and me at times. We need the Lord to come. We need the Lord to carry us. And to see us through. And to help us complete. And he's the finisher. The supremacy of the finisher finally. Because having completed the course. Where's the Saviour now? Well, verse 2 provides the answer. He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And therefore he is from on high able to see all that's going on in your life. And being at the right hand of God, he's praying for you. That's the place of intercession. He's praying for you as you run the Christian race. And being at the right hand of God in heaven is waiting to see you safely over the finishing line. You know, every stride that you take in this great Christian race, you're going closer and closer to the Lord. You're going toward him, toward where he is. Your feet are on the track, but your eyes are toward the glory. You're looking up. You're looking up. And you can see the glory by faith and the prize and the winner's laurel and the Christ who has redeemed you by his precious blood. All these thoughts and others as well, I'm sure, can be brought forth from 
these verses that are before. Here's a race that can never be cancelled. May the Lord help you as a child of God to run well. And you'll reach the finishing line. But may you run well for his eternal and everlasting glory. Let's bow together in a word of prayer. Eternal God and Father, we ask that thou wilt bless the word of God to our hearts. We thank thee for the picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who has run the race and conquered the course and who is able to sustain those who are his people in that race upon earth. And Lord, we ask that thou wilt help us to run well, to bring honour and glory to thy name and to know the blessing of competing well for Jesus Christ and for his honour. Answer prayer. Bless each one who has listened and will listen to these words. May the Lord's name be honoured and glorified in their hearts and in their lives. For Christ the Lord's sake. Amen. Amen. Once more may I say how much I appreciate you spending this time around the word of God. May the Lord bless you indeed for Jesus our Saviour's sake. Amen.